It was Pin Pala 20 who called, not the ivory part here, because this is, well, it's white, but the, I mean, it's called ivory. West Clock called it the ivory paint scheme. It was Pin Pala 20 who called this brown ring here on the dial the the brown donut. Yeah, I, that that was him who 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 came up with that one. I figured that'd be possibly worth adding to the video. Talk tick, talk tick, and talk tick. Oh, well, now it's almost twelve o'clock and I'm here in a studio. Should I stay or go back home? I don't know what to do. One thing that I know for sure, that girl and I are through. Still here and tick tock tick. Well, hello again, guys, and welcome back to another episode of GPWS. So, what have we got here today? We have a Style 5 Baby Ben here with a luminous dial, ivory paint scheme. We got the brown donut <laughs> happening there. Uh, some felt feet. I don't know. It's in fairly okay condition, this one. And, uh, you know, we'll, we'll service it. That's the, that's the plan. And uh, for those of us who have no idea how to use these clocks, and I kind of go into these videos assuming everyone does, the directions are on the back. You've got a, um, a key to wind up the time train of the clock. You've got a key to wind up the alarm train. And these are trains of gears. You'll see what I'm talking about when this thing's actually apart. We've got a time setter, uh, and then we've got the which uh, you know the time, set the time, turn the hands. Then you've got an alarm mechanism setter. This is the alarm dial up here. I remember when I first got one of these, and you know I didn't know what this dial was for, but yeah, that's how you set the alarm on one of these things. And this one's really loose. Someone really messed up the. The tension setting mechanism in this this is way too loose this shouldn't be turned and out here if you want to know if, if your tension is too loose uh, just turn the hands ironically this seems too tight <laughs> but just turn the hands and if the alarm um, setter is moving like it is when you're just turning the hands any which way then it's too loose it's not supposed to turn like it is so that's a pretty easy fix unless something is really wrong with this clock I don't know but, you know, it seems okay from the outside, of course, famous last words. Spring is wound up all the way. Someone would, some would, some who have no idea how, to, how these things work would say that's overwound. Uh, I guess the only way you could possibly overwind a clock is if you keep going and the spring snaps. This is not overwound. This is, uh, I don't know what you'd call it, but it's, 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 it needs a service. That's what it is. So anyways, it's a fairly nice clock, really easy to use, and uh, let's get into servicing it, shall we? I'd like to do this more in the future where uh, I'm in my garage working on the luminous clocks, and I'll, I'll get more into this whole radium thing in a new, um, in another series. And hopefully in the future I can explain better uh, this whole radium thing, because this has one of the luminous dials and the luminous hands, and all that jazz there. So this is why I'm in my garage, which is a ventilated environment, as you can hear birds outside. There's a door right behind me. You know, this is where all the radioactive stuff gets dismantled outside, so I don't contaminate the basement. And there'll be more on that in another video series, so don't... If, if you're working on one of these, do it in some kind of outdoorsy environment. Once again, the garage works fine. Also got this piece of plastic under the clock just so um, I'm not scratching up the glass when I put it face down. And, uh, sp ooh, I've just spotted paint chipping in there. Ooh, yeah, that's not any good. Well, I guess, I don't know, is that, I guess it's gonna peel off really bad there. I think we can probably leave that. I don't, I don't believe I'm gonna get into repainting this particular clock. In the future, I'd like to do that, though. Okay, where do I start dismantling one of these things? Well, you just turn the key, you just, whoops. <laughs> I just kick something under the table here. You just turn the keys backwards to take them off. Yep. And yes. Jesus. 
pushed up the alarm knob, you don't have to worry about some crazy ridiculous uh, with pliers or something. No, 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 this thing just pops right off. You just have to turn it backwards. And it, as you can see, it's threaded. If it's, yeah, I'm pretty sure all of these were threaded. All the baby band knobs were uh, for that arbor there. Uh, actually, no, they weren't. Disregard. Past the style six. Actually, let me think here. Does the style six, I don't know. I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself here, viewers. Take it bit case by case. How about that? Okay, so we got our controls off. Uh, this will just take the actually I don't know maybe we should mm, I guess we'll take the the actual bezel off now yeah no as I'm saying take it case by case I'll get into more of which bends have threaded knobs and which ones have ridiculous pull off knobs later on in and oh, oh and by the way uh, no oh and not later on in this video I'm talking about in another series I'm putting all my bits and pieces in parts lids and cups and things. Just an easy way to keep track of everything so I don't lose it. And I also make uh, sections, you know, like for the, for instance, the case gets its own screw sections and all that type stuff. Okay, take, uh, yeah, out the, whoops, there goes the glass. There goes the case, glass, yep, luminous, yep. And see now if any radium dust or any particles come off this, then I'm not contaminating the basement. So now, what do we do about hand removal? Okay, well, I've got this specific card here. I've got this piece of cardboard, which I use only for the luminous clocks. And uh, you just slide it under the hands here, making sure, there we go. How about that? You get some saran wrap or plastic or whatever. I use plastic. This is my older um, solution. I used to use saran wrap more, but now I use like uh, plastic. And we use a couple of screwdrivers, cheap dollar store screwdrivers. Pry up underneath it. Oops, jeepers, where am I at here? Pry up underneath, and uh, maybe it helped to stabilize this thing a little bit. Oh, there it goes. And just pop it off like that. No, you're not harming it. And this is what I'm talking about. This has just slid onto the table now. So where am I gonna put, where am I gonna store these hands since they're literally radioactive? Well, I've got a cup here for that, with the lid on there. And I'm gonna just, uh, um, hmm. I'm debating if I even wanna touch that with my screwdriver, my magnetic screwdriver. Totally disregard that, viewers. Get a pair of tweezers and just pick it up like that and put it in there. And this is a Little Caesars marinara, I'm, I'm not even kidding, this is a Little Caesars pizza marinara sauce container I use for these types of things, generally. Uh, they're pretty pretty good for this type of stuff, and I'm just gonna turn this upside down just so it's not all over the bottom of the dial. And we'll just do rinse and repeat, do that again. Oh, and by the way, once we get the, hand and the hands and the dial off, we can just take it inside, because there's, no, there's nothing else in there unless radium particles or paint I'm sorry we're not radiant particle unless the paint particles have just gone all over the clock somehow I don't know anyway once again rinse and repeat this pop it on whoops let me just actually grip the dial more so oh and by the way the cardboard is to protect the dial and the saran wrap is to make sure the hands don't go shooting across the room and that just fell off and uh, let's see here. That just, what the heck happened there? Something isn't quite right with what we've done. If we look at the alarm hand, you can see a massive hole in the end of it. If we look at a non-luminous alarm hand, we can see that there is a, I don't know what you'd call that, this metal part here, or this steel part or nickel plated or whatever that is. I'm not sure what you'd call that. I think it's some kind of, uh, oh, what is it? I don't know, I thought I knew the name, but apparently not. Anyway, it has completely popped out of this hand and is still on the arbor. So what do you do in, in this type of situation? Well, we're going to get that off later because I'm going to totally lose it in the garage here. In the garage. Why, why am I having a hard time saying garage? It's a garage, bro, whatever. I had someone hound me on that, but I don't, I don't care enough for you to... <laughs> anyway, uh, okay, let's get this off. I've cut another slit in this. 
And oh, by the way, is this method crap now, viewers? Does it not work? Well, if you look at literally any other video on my, or any other series on my channel with this method, you'll see that it works just fine. It's just this stuff seems to happen occasionally. So there's nothing, there's nothing you can really do to avoid it because if it popped out that easily, it would have happened later down the line anyway. Oh, come on, there we go. See, this came out entirely and it came out right. As you can see, it has its metal bit on the end of that. So that's good. And take dial off. Uh, cardboard comes with, I'm pretty sure. Does this just, oh no, there, oh, there it is. Oh, I think it just, what the heck? Oh, I guess this stays with this wheel. Huh, that's not, I, this This can happen sometimes viewers where the this the uh, part of the motion work will stay with the dial. I'm gonna try and, and the door just slammed. I'm gonna try and pop this back on right now, actually. While we're here. Oh, come on. You know what I'm just realizing, viewers? Some of these baby bends don't even bother removing the alarm hand. It'll just come off with the dial with the motion work here. This this will all just pop off, so don't even bother trying to take the alarm hand off at literally any given time, just leave it on, because I'm looking at this gear and it doesn't look like it was ever meant to come off to begin with. What I'm actually gonna try and do now is press this hand on to this. Oh, shoot. <sighs> Shouldn't be touching this stuff. Yeah, do not touch the paint viewers. I'm 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 not I'm trying my best not to. Actually I think gloves would be kind of a wiser thing to be wearing here, wouldn't it? Okay, eight and a half hours later we've managed to actually get it on. And what I'm doing is uh using very light dabs of gorilla glue just to keep it on that on that there. I think it's a cullet that it's on. But yeah, I had like since it's a radioactive you know, since it's got the radiant paint and everything, I don't want to touch that with my hands. And, you know, I figured it'd just pop back on, but obviously that's not the case. So I used rubber gloves. And, uh, yeah, once again, I'm gonna have to do more radium information type videos and stuff like that. But anyway, I'm just, you know, super gluing that back on. And uh, if this hand is bent or some something like that, like if it's not, aligned quite right then I'll just uh, I'll just bend it with pliers and that's the best way to go about it and I think that's done enough glue so hopefully that holds I don't know why it wouldn't I mean this is a ham this isn't some super big part or something like that you can get away with stuff like this on small breakages like that and also no one really saw it that well but here's the outside of the case again I don't know if I'm going to be doing much with this. Seems in pretty good shape. You can take the base off. I don't know if I will. Because it seems in pretty good shape otherwise. Oh yeah, so what's the moral of the story here with this alarm hand? Uh, don't even bother taking it off. Try pulling on the dial. Just gently pull it up, you know, first. On the baby bends. And maybe the big bends too. I don't know. I'm going to screw around with that on different clocks. This is an interesting lesson that I've had to learn today. And at least hopefully this is how we fix this problem. So yeah, it does not want to snap back on viewers. So like it kind of does, but it won't hold. It doesn't grip. So anyway, let's move on. So all, everything that happened there was strange to say the least. And I was so flustered apparently that I ended up calling the hour hand, the alarm hand the entire time. I apologize. That is the hour hand, not the alarm hand. The alarm hand came off good but the hour hand did not so okay let's get this apart shall we uh let's take these little screws out there's three of them let's not strip them first yeah hopefully that doesn't that doesn't set the mood for the rest of the series hey ruins the alarm hand and that's the end of everything i think i'll get another lid here i don't need this hand put that there keep the screws in the lid here Make sure you don't lose them. There we are. Oh, you can't really see. I'm gonna get this screw off here. I don't know why I'm doing it in this order. I guess you can really do these things in any really way you want because the bell should actually come off first before any of this. So I don't know why I didn't do it like that. 
Oh, man. And obviously to take the bell off, three screws like this. And off comes the final one. Hopefully there's no dead spiders or something in here. Because that has happened before, viewers. That, that does happen. Okay, what have we got in here? Typical, oh, we've got broken rubber. Fantastic. Yeah, the rubber that's riveted in under this tends to crack and break quite frequently. This is turned to just plastic, basically. Uh, this in here. Oh, there's some kind of... Huh, there's, there's some kind of rubber grommet thing up near the uh, alarm setter there. I don't know what that's doing in there. That's interesting. Ooh, I better not chip that paint off. I don't want that everywhere. Is that getting in the way? Oh, yeah, and by the way, this thing here, this is so, this is a dust protector, and it's also the speed control. See, so you, you close it to, you know, keep dust from coming in and lift it up, and then you can stick a small screwdriver or a toothpick, make sure it's not magnetic, so you don't bend up the hairspring. Um, you can stick a toothpick or a very small screwdriver in there and adjust the speed control for the clock. So, as everyone knows, these aren't accurate down to the minute. So, they need adjustments, so that's what that's for. And I can see this hasn't gotten in the way of that, which is good. Uh, too bad no one wrote any dates or anything like that in there. But I've started writing... Uh, I, actually, I've done it for them. I'm the one who's writing the dates in these days. More on that later. And that just, okay, well, that was, you know, that's supposed to come off. But, man, oh, man, this is, the rubber is just gone in this movement. Yeah, it's just everywhere. And then looking somewhat crumbly because of the rubber all over the place. This looks fairly cl clean. I don't know what this is. I don't know what that's all about, but anyway, that's that. I don't, this has probably never been serviced before. Some of these have been, but a lot of them have not. Let's unscrew this. Oh man, I can just see the I can just see the rubber grommets under there. These look more. These look dilapidated. They look about as dilapidated as the other ones do. Maybe this one was in a really dry environment. I don't know. It's, I guess this is better than things rusting out, though. That's all I gotta say on that. And there we are, there's this. Oh, I thought that, what the heck? <laughs> I thought this, oh man, I thought this was a screw that had had its head snapped off sticking out of there. No, it's just the threads for this. Okay. That was scary there for a second. I thought I, thought I just, you know, ruined, so I thought something just stripped on me. Okay, there's the other one. Grommet looks okay in that, so we don't have to replace it. And I don't even know if you can even get anything that'll even fit this anymore. I know you can get like grommet packs and stuff, but I don't know if anything would fit this specific size. I don't know. It might, it might not. Oh, and this one's all, this one's shattered. Well, once again, it doesn't look like I'll be replacing any of these, so I'm just going to try and make that work as that is. It's not like I can, it's not like I can go in the West Clock, uh, first aid for injured West Clock catalogs or whatever and order up a bunch of parts for this thing. No, you just got to take what you've been dealt. And if it's really bad, it's basically a parts clock. But no, this one isn't too bad. Or this one isn't half bad. And let's see here. How's our... Oh, boy. More rubber's falling out of this thing. And here's our movement. Let's see when we're built. December 3rd of 1941. Man, this was right before... Well, the First World... Or, I'm sorry. The Second World War had just started here. But, uh... Let's see if... It, actually, let's see if we can get this to turn a little bit better. Run a little bit better. Doesn't look like it. Anyway, yeah, the Second World War had just started, and uh, these clocks were about to be taken out of production right away. 
so they didn't they didn't hang around very long and it doesn't look like we're gonna get any running out of this that's okay the whole thing's coming apart anyway so what do we do uh well this someone already screwed up the t well they didn't screw it up they just loosened it for some reason on this movement so the knot actually i think we might just be able to pull this one off okay now what we'll do is take our springs off so there's the spring well the spring barrels off i'll take them off uh where are the winding keys get those screw them into place again oops and yeah, they, they just thread right back into place. Very convenient. Now what you can do is just move this one forward or turn the key, like not even a full turn yet. So it's, the click has been pushed up. And you can just do it like that. I know this one has already been wound down here. I'll show you a better example of what I'm talking about. And the keys are now interchangeable in this era, so that's great. Oh, it doesn't look like I have any turning room. Great. I guess I'll just... Oh, now we definitely do. Okay. So once again, we'll give that a, you know, move adjusted so it's up. Pull the click spring back and just hold it very tightly there as we let her down. <laughs> that was not how I wanted to do that. Okay, well... Okay, that method might need a little bit of revising, but nine times out of 10, I've gotten that to work really well. So, just gently letting the spring down. But anyway, the way it, you know, it came down really fast, but it doesn't, it's not, I don't think it's gonna damage anything. Okay, now that we've gotten that out of the way, uh, let's undo these screws for our spring barrels. And at this time, I, I get a new part slid at this point in the uh, service. Just, just, you know, keep all the inside and the outside stuff separated. And I just threw my screwdriver halfway across the room for some reason. Okay, let's get that out. Put one screw there. One there. And one here. Now we just pull it out like that. It's really simple. And this whole thing is modular. So really at the end, by the end of this, you have just the actual gear train and then that's it. So, and also we can see our alarm hammer already is ready to come out. It, it goes in that pivot there. And this thing can already be removed. But I'm, I'm just, I'll just leave it in there for now. Take this one out. And I believe, oh yeah, this is the time, or no, this is the alarm side. I believe this this train here, or maybe it's the other way around. Hold on, which way is which? Uh, I think, yeah, no, no, this is the, whoops. Okay, no, this is the time side, and, oh, wait, what the heck? Oh, never mind. Okay, viewers, this, that's the alarm side. The time side would interact with the center arbor here, but it has it, it doesn't, so. And that's not it. All right, so there we go. Oh. Okay, after removing the last screw, we can now just pop this out. Maybe pull it backwards more so. Swing it out like that, I guess. And there we have it. Okay, now that we've done that, we can, uh, I'm actually at this point, I think it'd be good to incorporate this great device here. Uh, I, I think it came with some kind of party favor gift basket or whatever, but its purpose in the GPWS is to basically hold movements for the most part. See, as you can see, that fits on there fairly well.